Hi guys, in this video I will show you how to search and download Airfold data and after how to edit that data in order to import it in SOLIDWORKS. Before we do that, let's see which parameters define an Airfold shape. So, we have a chord line, which is a straight line drawn from the leading edge to the trailing edge. We have a mean camber line, which is a curved line from the leading edge to the trailing edge and also it is equidistant between the upper and the lower surfaces. We have the leading edge, which is a point at the front of the airfoil that has maximum curvature. We have the trailing edge, which is defined similarly as the point of minimum curvature at the rear of the airfoil. We have the upper surface, or suction surface, which is generally associated with higher velocity and lower static pressure. We have the lower surface or pressure surface which has a comparatively higher static pressure. The pressure gradient between these two surfaces contributes to the lift force generated for a given airfoil. We have the angle of attack which is the angle between the core line and the streamwise flow direction. We have a maximum thickness which is the maximum distance between the upper and lower surfaces of the airfoil normal to the core line and the maximum camber, which is the maximum distance between the cord line and the mean camber line. Ok, so now that we know some of the basic parameters, let's go ahead and search for an airfoil. We are going to use the database provided by the University of Illinois, so we must go at the UIUC airfoil data site. As you can read here, included below are coordinates for nearly 1600 airfoils. If you don't know which airfoil we are going to use, just click on any letter and you can click on the picture so you can see how it looks like. Let's click on another one. Let's go back. We want to download the NACA 4415 airfoil. Scroll down. Okay. We can take a look at the airfoil shape. Back. Click on the name. And you can see a new window that opens. And it shows the coordinates that we want to copy. We don't need that anymore. Create a new text document. You can name it NACA4415. Okay, open it. And then paste all the coordinates and save. Ok, so next we are going to open an Excel workbook and we are going to open from Excel the text file we just created. Click all files so that you can see it, open it. And now we are going to click on fixed width, next and then click to make one more column and finish. So we have the uh, X and Y axis, we need one more, and it's the Z axis. Without that, we won't be able to import it in SOLIDWORKS. We are going to fill it with zeros all the way down. Double click on the corner and it's done. We go to File, Save, click Yes. Make sure that you use decimal points instead of commas. Close Excel. Now open SOLIDWORKS, click on File, New, Part, OK. Click on Curves, Curve through XYZ points, Browse and Text Files so that we can choose our airfoil profile. Click Open. Everything is in millimeters and correctly imported. Click OK. Now I have to zoom a little bit because we didn't resize our airfoil. That's why it's so small. Anyway, I will probably make a new video about that. So let's choose the front plane and normal too. Then click on sketch and convert entities. Choose the airfoil entities. Right mouse click and it's done. Exit sketch. We can hide the curve since we don't need it anymore. We can extrude our profile or modify it however we wish. Okay, so there you have it. 
This is the easiest way to create an airfoil in SOLIDWORKS. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, don't forget to click like and subscribe. You can also check my previous videos. See you on the next one and thanks for watching.